Welcome to the Character Chronicles, the People Show. Check the post Nebraska Nation brought to you by Nebraska Spine Hospital. Today I have a special guest. I'm joined by current Nebraska wide receiver, Samori Ture. How you doing, my friend? Uh, I'm doing really good, man. You know, got the dub this week. Uh, celebrated with teammates in the locker room and all that. And now uh, we're on to Buffalo. Yeah, so before we move on to Buffalo, real quick, I want to chat about that for yeah. just a minute. Because it was a little bit of a breakout game, okay? You, you had over 100 yards receiving. You made some nice plays. Uh, you even got involved in the triple option, got a pitch for it, took it in for a touchdown. So for a guy like yourself, going from FCS, where you were an All-American, to FBS and a Power 5 school, how did that game feel as a team to get the win? But for yourself, as someone who wanted to prove that you could play on this level, how did that feel for you individually as well? Uh, well, first of all, as a team, you know, it felt great. You know, tough loss week one, but uh, I love the way we bounced back, you know, like I knew we would. We had a really good week of practice. We were locked in all week, and I think that really showed uh, on game day. And then individually, you know, it was really fun to get out there, you know, in front of the fans and, you know, uh, and ha- and have a good game like I did. You know, I felt like me and Adrian uh, had really good chemistry. We're on the same page on almost every route. And uh, as far as proving myself, you know, I kind of want to hold off on that a little bit because at the same time, you know, that was against the FCS program. And, you know, we, we got a long season ahead of us. And I think I think I, I'm, I'm really going to prove myself when we, when we get to conference games. I like that answer. I like how you responded to that. So talk to me about the chemistry with Adrian, because I've heard about that before. Now, some guys, mm-hmm. when they meet, they just kind of click and they get along. Sometimes you got to develop mm-hmm. it over time. How has it been for you and your quarterback? Is that something that was a little bit instantaneous? Has it been more of a development through practice? How has that been for you two? Uh, I feel like it was, it was a little bit of a development. Um, you know, but like on a personal level, Adrian's a really easy guy to get along with, you know. He's a great leader, you know, always puts the team first. So that that got my respect for him, you know, right off the bat. And uh, But I also feel like, you know, we got pretty good chemistry relatively fast, you know. You know, I think a big thing was me coming here uh, in the spring, you know, being able to, to go through that spring ball and, and, and get on the same page with him, get the playbook down. So I feel like once once fall camp started, you know, it was we started right where we left off in spring ball. Have you ever done anything like that where you became the pitch man in an option play? I mean, you, maybe you did in high school or middle school, but have you done anything like that since college? And, you know, that's something you, you kind of thought was fun. Maybe you guys uh, keep doing that going forward. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, that was something that I never did, you know, not even going from – not even in high school, you know. Uh, got, got involved in the run game a little bit in high school, but other than that, you know, I've been, you know, strictly a receiver. And, you know, when I got here in the spring – and, and I saw this type of plays we were running, you know, w- with that option. Uh, I, I really liked it because, you know, it's just a good way to, to get get the ball in your playmaker's hands in space. And also it's something that, you know, has to keep the, the defense honest. And that's something that they got a game plan for, you know, every week. So, you know, I really liked, I really liked the fact that we have that element of our offense. Now, obviously, I'm not going to ask you to divulge too much here, but it's a little bit more of the read option, a little bit more maybe that read triple option. Is that something Husker fans can look forward to going forward down the road as the season continues? Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, like you said, I'm not going to get too too much into it, but yeah, you know that that's just something that that's just an element of our offense that we have. You know, among other things, you know, we have a we have a, a good run game. You know, we take shots, but we also have that read option as well. So it, it makes it tough on defenses when they have so much to prepare for. So, and I, I'm big on motivation and guys who are motivated. I'm, you know, I've seen guys come in and they weren't too excited about certain things and it doesn't pan out while other guys come in and they're uber motivated. So that, that aspect of you kind of intrigues me a little bit because you could have stayed at FCS, you could have stayed at Montana. So what prompted you to come to, like, Nebraska specifically? And obviously you've been here for a while. Yeah. These are questions you could have you know, been asked months ago, but it's our first conversation. Mm. So why Nebraska specifically for you? Uh, I really think it was just it was just the coaches, you know, because, you know, when I was in that portal and I was back home in Oregon, I couldn't go on any visits anywhere, you know. Uh, never been to Nebraska before in my life, but, you know, once I got on the phone with, with, 
Coach Lubick and Coach Frost. You know, I, I just really felt comfortable with them, and I felt like we were on the same page. You know, and another thing that played into it was both of them, you know, playing, uh, coaching for Oregon, you know, which is where I'm from. I was, I was familiar with them. And, you know, when they were at Oregon, they had one of the most explosive uh, offenses in the country. So that's something that intrigued me a little bit. And other than that, it was just the fact that, you know, they made it known, they made it clear what their intentions were. You know, they needed, you know, an older guy to come in with experience. You know, we got a lot of talent in the receiving room, but also a lot of, uh, young guys who necessarily lack that experience. So, you know, I feel like they made their intentions clear. You know, we were on the same page and we kind of just went from there. What part of Oregon are you from? Remind me real quick. Uh, I'm from Portland, Oregon. Okay. Have you ever been to the coast, kind of like Florence, Winchester Bay, Coos Bay? You ever been four-wheeling along the coast there in Oregon? Yeah, uh, I've actually been to Coos Bay, I think, once when I, when I was younger. Uh, never got the chance to go four wheeling, but actually that's something that that I've I've wanted to do for a while now. But yeah, the the Oregon coast is really nice, you know, when it's not super rainy. Yeah, which which is a lot of the time. So I don't yeah, know. Right. You may have heard of the Tri Cities uh, in the state of Washington. So I actually grew up in the Tri Cities. So I grew up not far from Portland. My dad and I every summer, starting in um, in high school, my freshman year of high school, every summer we went down to Florence, Coos Bay, Winchester Bay, and we did a week long four wheeling trip along the coast in Oregon. And that's something we actually okay. continued all the way through college. Um, I don't really? think anybody knew that at Nebraska, or they might not have been thrilled about that because I did wreck a few yeah, machines. Right. Um, but yeah, no, if you ever get a chance, man, it's a lot of fun. And like you said, if it's not rainy, which it happens a lot, it yeah. is gorgeous. So no, that's something yeah, I enjoy doing quite a bit. Usually the best. And yeah, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with the Tri-Cities. You know, when I, made, when I had to make that drive from Oregon to Montana, I would always drive to Tri-Cities on the way there. Okay. Yeah, so I, I went to Kennewick High School. That's where I grew up from the time I was three. I was born in Hastings, but I moved when I was younger. My dad found a new job up there okay. after he got laid off. So talk to me a little bit about Montana. Cause, uh, about, so my mom grew up in Lewistown, which is right in the middle of Montana. So I've been through Helena. I've been through Billings. I've been through all the Great Falls a million times going to see my grandma and grandpa. So I got to ask you about the weather because I've never been there in the winter. We always made these summer trips oh. as a vacation. And my sister oh, lives the, there you now. You got the good part. You, you got yeah. The, the, that's the best time to go. Montana is beautiful in the summer. Dude, that's why we went there. We weren't stupid right. now. But my sister yeah, lives right. there now. And she tells me it gets to negative 50 below. Is she full of crap or is that for real? Uh. It depends where you're at in Montana, honestly. It does get it, it does get down there in the negatives. But Missoula, not 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 very much. You know, it got to, you know, negatives three, five, seven sometimes, you know, with that wind chill. But those those eastern parts of Montana is is where it really gets cold. So Missoula was never too bad. But I would just say the main thing is just how long the winters are. Yeah. You know, winter winter starts starts really early and then it, sometimes it'll last all the way until March, you know, we, we we had to cancel some of our spring ball practices, you know, starting in March, late March, because the field was frozen over. So it, it, it's, it's some long winters in Montana. Yeah, my sister always tells me about how cold it is there. And I'm like, you chose to live there. But anyways, I digress. All right, so let's put a bow on the Fordham game because you guys had a little bit of a slow start, but then you started, right. were able to move the ball up and down the field. Obviously, you put 52 points on the board. So is that attributed to maybe just a little bit of a slow start, or were you guys able to get a little bit of continuity, a little bit of rhythm, a little bit of confidence? What do you attribute the the first quarter and a half to and then how the rest of the game went offensively? Yeah, you know, like like we said, we started off slow, and that's something that, you know, we talked about a lot throughout the game, you know, saying, you know, we can't do that. Like, if we want to be the team that, that we know we can be, we can't start slow. We got to we gotta come out, you know, guns blazing. But I feel like just – you know, us settling in and, and, and getting on the same page. Maybe you guys are a little excited, you know, being the first home game. I'm not sure what it was, but we, we definitely got things together, you know, closing out that first half, you know, with that with that two-minute drive, and we got that touchdown before halftime. So, and then, you know, we came out third quarter uh, ready to go. So, I, I just think we need, we need to start how we finished on Saturday, and we'll be fine. What was Coach Frost's message to the team after the game as you start to look ahead to a team like like Buffalo? Um, he, he just said, you know, good win, but, you know, that's what we're supposed to do. 
you know, we, did, we, we came out, we executed, we did what we're supposed to do, and we got to move on to Buffalo. And as far as Buffalo goes, you know, uh, he, he let us know. You know, he gave them all their respect, you know. They're, they're a really good team, you know. They played a lesser opponent, you know, week one, but they handled business. You know, they put up, I think, almost 70 points. So, I mean, that's a team that, you know, won their conference uh, last year, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, we, we definitely got to prepare very good this week. Yeah, so Buffalo was one of the highest scoring teams in the country last year. And I know they had some mm-hmm. players and, and coaches that went elsewhere, but they dropped 69 on Wagner. So as exactly. you kind of prepare, and they've got a good D-line. Okay, so hopefully you guys can protect mm-hmm. Martinez so he can get the ball to guys like such as yourself. But as you go right. into this Buffalo game, what's the mentality? What's the attitude uh, as you progress week from week to week and you hopefully get better and better every time you take the field on Saturday? Yeah, so that, that's exactly our mindset, you know, just to improve every week, you know, and, and, and build off this first win. You know, I feel like we got – I feel like we're, we're hitting our stride at the right time, you know. Guys are getting on the same page. Practice was, was one of the sharpest we've had all year today, and, and that's just what it needs to be. You know, we need to progress every week, get a little bit better, and, and make sure we be sharp and, 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 and play mistake-free. You know, that was a big thing in the week one game. We feel like we beat ourselves a little bit. And we improved on that in the Fordham game. I think we only had two penalties for 10 yards. And we just need to keep that going, make sure we play discipline and, and keep getting better. Last question. I promise it's not a load of questions, so answer it however you want to. You got a lot of talented guys in that receiver room. And obviously those guys starting right now, they're doing a good job. But you look at some of the younger guys who have, who have shown uh, dynamic playmaking ability in the past, Xavier Betts, Latte Brown, Omar Manning. How do guys like that get on the field a little bit more often? Again, that's not loaded. I'm a former player. I would have hated that yeah. question, so answer it however you want to. No, I got you. Man. Yeah, man, that, that, that's one thing I've, I've been telling them, you know, you know, uh, especially Xavier, Xavier and Alante, you know, they, they got all the talent in the world, man, and they're going to be so good. The Husker Nation hasn't even, you know, seen – the beginning of what they can do. But, but what I told those guys is just, you got to stay with the program and, and, and keep, and, and keep going hard in practice. I think that's the main thing that's going to help them see the field more. And the, you know, last week they were super locked in, you know, all week. And, uh, I think that's really all it is, is make sure they're locked in, know their jobs. And, and all they can do is make plays when the ball comes their way. And I feel like that's what they did. They had a few good catches on Saturday and, and so did Alonso. You know, he, he, he made two guys fall on a quick hitch route, and I told him, you know, that's all you can do. When the ball comes your way, make a play, and, and you're going to see the field more. All right, man, I appreciate your time. Good luck this Saturday, and good luck the rest of the season. All right, thank you, Adam. Until next time, Husker Nation, go big. Red and always remember, throw the bones. Thanks again to our sponsor, Nebraska Spine Hospital. Ladies and gentlemen, when it's your spine, you do not want to mess around and experience matters. That's why you can trust the experts at Nebraska Spine Hospital, the region's only spine-specific hospital. They are the best at what they do.